The Lord be with you. Also with you. Welcome to worship, everybody. Glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you, Tyler. How are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, you know. How are you doing? I'm okay. It was fun to hear you. We just talked a little bit about Tyler walking on water uh, and uh, out there with his dog, Buddy. Sounds like that was fun. Oh, yeah. He's been, it's, it was really fun. We got out to a little bit. There's a bunch of ice fishers out there right now. So we started taking a little trek out there and a little adventure time, you know? Good, good, good. You, you have, you've been on frozen water before, haven't you? I have. I have. Yeah. I used to be pretty good at hockey skating for a while there. And then, uh, cool. then I lost it. Yeah, I know. Weird things to learn, but I never, I didn't keep it up. So I'm hoping to pick it back up while I'm up here. Awesome. Awesome. Good, good. Well, glad you're here and glad all the rest of you folks are here too. Welcome confirmation students, parents, other Wednesday folks. And uh, we're glad you're here. And we know some of you guys are joining us every week. Others of you are just finding us for the first time. Either way, we're really glad you're here. If you've got concerns, uh, don't hesitate to reach out, uh, give a call to our church office or reach out to us by email. That would be cool. And then uh, pretty much right after this worship service is over, uh, Tyler, you'll be leading folks in confirmation class. Is that right? That's correct. Cool. What's the topic this week? Uh, we're going through the Lord's Prayer. We did like a little intro last week, and then this week we're like diving into it now. Awesome. Awesome. Good, good, good. And the other thing, I know that you've gotten some response. You're, we're trying to help uh, do something we had hoped to do last fall, but just couldn't make it all come together. You're looking for some adults and parents to kind of help serve as group leaders, mentors in this process? Yeah, so we're looking for some people who would be willing to do like small group leading. Um, it'll still all be over Zoom and it'll be like, we'll break out into little breakout rooms and we'll supply you with questions and things. But it's going to be a much more intimate way that we can still socialize and uh, I think that we'll get a lot more out of it this way. And we would love to have you on board. So if, you, if you're interested in that, you should totally reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Awesome. Well, thanks for that, man. And, and uh, thanks for all you're doing. Uh, continue to pray for your church, if you would. We'll keep praying for you. And let's, uh, let's begin our worship then in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Creator God, uh, bless us with the presence of your anointed Son. As Jesus brought good news to the world, empower us to do the same. Uh, grant us grace to follow where Jesus has led the way. In your name we pray and play. Amen. Hey, Tyler, before you jump into the scripture, it might be good for people to have an idea of what's happening here. So let's, let's talk about that for just a minute. So we've been reading in the Gospel of Luke, and we read the story of, of Jesus' birth, and we read the story of his, uh, his uh, being blessed in the temple, and we read the story of him uh, going to the temple as a 12-year-old, and we read the story about him baptized. And now we're reading the story of him as he has just begun his ministry right after he was baptized. And he's been doing great work in the countryside around where he grew up. But he comes back to his hometown. And he does what a guest would do. Uh, a rabbi guest would do. He reads from the scripture. They're very impressed. But after a minute, they don't like the way the sermon turns on itself. And maybe even turns a little bit on them. So they get kind of ticked off. And so, so this is a, a really interesting text. Um, and um, maybe that's all we need to talk about for now. But we'll just jump in and, and uh, go ahead, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you're following along at home, uh, we're reading Luke chapter 4, verse 14 through 30. So uh, go ahead and turn to there. All right. Then Jesus filled with the power of the Spirit returned to Galilee, and report about him spread throughout the, throughout the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found a place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. They began to say, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. 
all spoke well of him and were amazed at gracious words that came from his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you do at Capernaum. And he said, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah. When the heaven was shut up three, six, three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except for the widows at Zarephath and Sidon. There was so many, are also many leper, lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was so cleansed except Naaman and Syrian. When they heard this, all the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Word of the Lord. Let's, uh, let's have a prayer, shall we? Yeah. Dear God, thanks for always being with us and for coming to us in your word. Uh, this is an important Bible lesson, and I pray that we'll each hear it and come to understand what we need to. Um, thanks for this time together. Thanks for all of these students and their families and, and help, help everyone to know that they are very much loved by this Jesus who, who came into the world to preach good news. It's in his name that we pray these things. Amen. Amen. So here we are in the Gospel of Luke. You just read this amazing story. And, uh, and honestly, um, next week, so next week, right, on Tuesday, is it Tuesday is going to be the inauguration of the new president? I think that's I believe so. Tuesday, yeah. So when, when biblical scholars look at this story in the Bible, they call this Jesus's inaugural sermon, which means his, his first sermon, where he, he, he stands up in front of this crowd and he tells them what he believes they need to know and what hopefully he's going to do about it. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the presidents have done for, for hundreds of years in our country where they, uh, where they give this inaugural speech. I think maybe one of the most famous ones from my life uh, was uh, President John Kennedy a long, long time ago. I mean, he, he, he got up and he said, uh, don't ask what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. And then also at the same time, he predicted and proposed that before the, the end of the decade, that people would put uh, somebody on the moon, right? It was, it was amazing. I mean, he, he set out this grand vision of how things ought to be and, uh, and he gave people this hope and this dream. And it was, it was kind of amazing, very memorable. And so that's, that's kind of what Jesus is doing here too. And, and so um, where are we, man? Let's take a look at, so, um, so they're like in verse like 18, right? What is it that Jesus says that God has, is going to do with him? I mean, can you, can you take a look at that again, Tyler? Yeah, yeah. Um, got to get to the right spot. Okay. Uh, he anointed to bring good news to the poor and to right. proclaim the release of captives and yep. recover the sight of the blind until yep. they let the oppressed go free. Yeah. So that's a big ask. That's a big ask, right? But he is saying, and then, and then later on he says, uh, and then he says uh, in verse 22, one, he says, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Wow. He says that all of these things that have been promised from the time of the prophet Isaiah are going to happen because of him. And man, everybody's amazed. I mean, they're just amazed at this. But real quickly, things get a little dicey because he says... Um, but you need to know that this good news that I'm proclaiming, it just isn't for the people like you and me who come to the synagogue. Like a long time ago when Isaiah healed that foreigner and when Isaiah or when, um, and then uh, Elijah, you know, or when rather Isaiah, you know, helped help that woman 
and, and, um, and then Elisha uh, healed that foreigner. They were outsiders, right? They were like, if you had leprosy or you were, you were a woman who had nobody, you were like- Passed out, like there was nothing. Yeah, so I mean, can you imagine what that must have felt like when, when he said that to his people? I mean, they're going, yeah, yeah, Jesus, awesome, awesome. This is great news, but wait a minute. It's not just for us, it's for somebody else too. It's like your entire, that had to rock a lot of worlds. Just to, to hear that, this, this message that you were told, is like, this is my thing. This is all for me and I get all of this. And then it's not just for you. It's for the other people that aren't listening to me right now. Uh -huh. For the ones that aren't hearing this, aren't hearing me talk about it. It's for all these other people that also are going to receive all this, like all these <laughs> blessings and love. How crazy to think. Oh man. Do you, Tyler, how many siblings do you have? You've got, I, I have three youngers, three younger. So you're the oldest. Yes. And I'm the oldest too. And, and then we have four kids. I'm trying to recall once if we ever taught any of our kids to say mine <laughs> probably not you know i don't think i like was taught mine you just learn mine <laughs> yeah and, and like when it's yours what do you want to do with it yeah, it's mine i keep it it's I not for it. you yeah i mean apple pie w wait a minute half my piece of apple pie mm. but that's mine that's my piece <laughs> of pie i know and so here comes this jesus who has preached eloquently. He's given this speech there. They're just raving about him. They think, man, what a great guy. I'll follow him anywhere. And then he says, okay, but when you do, you got to realize that what you have, you got to share with other people. And they go, wait a minute. That wasn't part of the deal. You <laughs> said that we were going to get nice things. Uh -huh. You didn't say I had to share nice things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, can you, can you think of real world examples of that? I mean, how, how does that fit into our lives today? I mean, you know, we, we joke about it as a piece of pie or a little kid saying it's mine, but I mean, we're talking to a group of teenagers here and their parents and, um, and, and younger kids too. That, that thing that's, it's mine. That's a pretty strong, pretty strong thing, isn't it? Yeah, it, there's, there's, so I'm going to, I'm going to go down a couple verses for you. Okay. And it says, when it's like, he, he says, you're going to quote this proverb, doctor, go cure yourself. And then like, go do these things in the hometown. And they're saying how uh, it's, it's pull yourself up, you know, go, go do it on your own. And the, the rest of the teaching that happens beyond that is how you can't just say, go pull yourself up because it's up to the community to also be there for you. Mm -hmm. And you are a member of that community. Um, there are people everywhere that are like struggling with multiple different things, right? Uh, people who are struggling with help, with homelessness are struggle like daily, right? But that's not something that needs to be ignored. That's something that can be easily like looked at and find solutions for, even if it's just as much as like people need blankets. And that seems like something so like, well, what, what are you going to do with blankets? Like it's cold outside. And while you might not be able to give a bed sometimes, you can give warmth, which is a lot better than not giving anything. Um, and hey, tell, tell there's me. there's like a hundred other... Go ahead, no, go it's ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying there's like a hundred other things that happen with that as well. Um, when people need food, right? And we are so quick to say like, we well, we should just, we can donate like, a couple items right but you it's also knowing what you need to eat versus what you want to eat um my parents always said the big thing of like we have food at home right and that was always something that sounded really dumb to me but as i got older i've realized that having food at home is different than like it's not i have food at home so we don't need to go out and eat it's we're lucky enough to have food at home that we are able to then like i share food with people who like it's harder for us to to like make the correct portions for ourselves. So we're not wasting food. And that still pays homage to that thought that we're still helping community members, regardless of like how big or small the actual act is. It's the, it's the push forward. It's the actual act itself of kindness that you're putting into it. Mm -hmm. um, just, just this morning at our staff meeting guys, 
uh, Tyler and our crew, we were talking about about different things that we'd like to maybe focus on. And and Wendy, uh, our church secretary, Wendy came up. She shared the idea about this bed program. Tyler, you you want to share a little bit about that because that's kind of an amazing idea. Yeah. So she she mentioned that there was this ministry that would take um, so kids who don't have beds, which is a huge problem, and it happens in a lot of places. And it's real, right? Most and it's of real. Our, it's most not something. Yeah. Yeah, it's not something that you just make up. It's like, oh, people don't have beds. It's something that people struggle with daily. That it is beds are expensive, um, and like mattresses are not cheap. It's I I've it's really hard for people to be able to make the choice between would you like to like there's food and then there's your bed and people are going to choose food over comfort a lot more times which hurts but she was mentioning that there's these people who build beds they take like just simple bed frames and they'll put them all together people who are good at woodworking or who are learning how to do it and it's very simple plans you can find online and they'll just put it all together and they donate these bed frames to these people who need beds and they'll find a way to donate mattresses to these people who need beds. And to add on, like if you can quilt, add a blanket onto it. You just create a whole bed set for someone who didn't have something like that. This is such like into the, in, I'm glad you mentioned this. Cause it's like really at the soul of what he's saying is like you, I'm here to like give these people the things that they need because they cannot provide for themselves currently because this is how we're going to help them get to the point where they can also go out and do those things for other people because there's I had a really awesome uh sermon told me once where I know I like when donation season comes up I don't know what it's called and I'm sorry if that's the wrong term for it oh like but but we call it stewardship yeah stewardship so yeah (laughs) There's like a percentage that you're supposed to put, like, they're like, all right, well, you put down this percentage of what they were asking for. I'm going to say 10% just because that's a number. And he went up, he's like, 10% of a hundred is 10 and 10% of zero is still zero. And that's okay because that's 10%. And if you can't like, and it was showing that just because it's not like, it's not visible doesn't mean it's not there doesn't mean that the effort isn't pushed there. It's not something that isn't like important to them as well, because it was the well-being of the people of the congregation was more important than the value of the dollar. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a powerful image really. And, you know, I think it's interesting how sometimes what's good news to somebody is not such good news to somebody else, you know, and, and this is, this is really true. This is really true. Uh, I know people, I have been one of those people who has looked at those who, uh, who don't have enough and have thought, man, if they just get a job, you know, or, or the old, man, this is, a, this is an old idiom that you teenagers won't have a clue about. It's called pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Yeah, go look that up on the Googleizer and see what that's all about. But, but the idea is, is that somehow, somehow everybody should be able to take care of themselves. Well, the fact of the matter in our world sometimes folks have challenges that are beyond their ability to respond to. And, and that's what Jesus is saying here. So he said, hey, you know what? There are people who are outside of our community who don't have all the blessings that we have. I mean, he doesn't say that God doesn't love them anymore. He says he still loves you, but he also loves them too. So by him loving those folks, does that take anything away from you? And they're going, well, yeah, yeah. Then he won't love us as much. And it's like, no, Jesus says, God's love is unlimited. God will continue to bless you by blessing other people. You'll be blessed and you'll also help them. And so it it does for those folks who, who have um, so much that they can't even imagine people who have very little, this comes as not such good news because it somehow makes them think that, well, because I have what I have, there's something wrong with me. No, that's not it. But there is something not right with you if you have a lot and maybe aren't willing to share it. I think there is something not right about that. And that's what ticked people off when Jesus said these words. And, you know, it might tick people off today too. You know, it's, it's interesting. I don't know, Tyler, um, you've really kind of taken to this whole preaching thing, but you got to remember sometimes after you preach, they want to throw you over the cliff. That's what they wanted to do to Jesus, you know? So 
get, get ready to run out of town if you need to. <laughs> this actually has one of my favorite verses in it too, because it's the it's I tell you truly, a prophet is not welcome in the prophet's hometown. And that that push to preach to people who don't want to hear it sometimes yeah. is something it's a message that needs to get heard, but it's not always well received. Yeah. And yeah. but you still gotta keep and it's something that we all do, like yeah. to you watching it, that's you. Um you you also can go out and preach. It's not and my favorite thing, and I've said it once, and I'll say it again, is you always should preach the gospel and when necessary, you use words. Right. 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 So the way we live, the way we behave, the way we the way we walk our walk, that's vitally important. Um, and it's always fun to have these conversations. And I, I hope that that maybe they spur other conversations too. Uh, we probably should wrap this up so everybody can get ready for confirmation. So um, thanks for the time, buddy. Let's let's pray and then we'll we'll head on out. Lord God, we are grateful that we can always come to you in our prayers. And we're grateful for your son, Jesus, who came into this world to preach good news to everybody, that no one is excluded, that everybody is welcome and everybody belongs. Now, for those of us who have been insiders for a long time, we might think that that means that somehow we're going to lose something or have something taken away from us, but it's simply not true. Help us to realize that we have more than enough love. We have more than enough stuff. We have more than enough opportunities so that we can be a blessing to others as Jesus calls us to do. Thanks, Lord, for all of these students and for their families. Thanks for, for our church. And even though we can't be together the way we want to be, help us to realize that, uh, that the church isn't made up of the walls that, that, are, that, that build it, but rather it's made up of the people where they live their lives. And so, so that each of us can be, can be the church wherever we are. So Lord, guide us and direct us and, and keep us as we pray this prayer now too. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now remember the worship has ended. It's time for the service to begin. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Peace, brother. Peace. Take care. We'll see you soon. Take care, all.